Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox and thanks for logging on. We are waking up with watches and everything you see here is for sale. For pricing, reach out to me directly, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. I'm also looking to build inventory, one watch or an entire collection. I will buy your watches in cash. Buy, trade or sell any of the three. There's one name, me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com buy, trade, or sell watches. Now let's talk about some spectacular things. They come with three crowns each. Okay, in 2016, Rolex launched evolutions of the Cosmograph Daytona. Not one, but several. On the full gold side, we had a white gold model with a blue dial, and on the steel side, we had a new ceramic bezel and a new reference number for the core Daytona, 116500 LN Lunette Noir. The black bezel in ceramic with white or black dial. This one seems to be the more popular of the two. I could not have imagined at the time, so, since I was at that Basel world, what a phenomenon this watch would become. Technically speaking, they're identical. Though I will say the yellow gold with the metallic green dial is a little bit warmer. It's certainly less common and it's more striking from a distance. Both of these watches are power watches, no holds barred. I have to say though that in terms of the color and the character, the yellow gold one's a bit quirkier and more endearing to me. Though, of course, the steel Daytona is king, and among steel Daytonas, the white dial is king. Both of them with the three-day power reserve, automatic winding, 100 meters water resistant. Both of them, COSC chronometers, both of them highly anti-magnetic. And as you can see, both of them are quite slender. You can see the bracelets nicely made. On the gold, it feels incredibly solid. Rolex bracelets are such that Rolex steel feels like other companies' gold bracelets, and Rolex gold bracelets feel like other companies' platinum. In each case, you have a 5mm easy link in and out tool-free adjustment that's ready and waiting. Both of these watches featuring Rolex chromolite blue luminant, as the Daytonas have since 2013. Gorgeous pieces, lots of fun to wear, and one of the best things about modern Rolex, with few exceptions, they are universally wearable. Male, female, big or small wrists at 40 millimeters and about 12.3 millimeters thick. These are easy watches to live with. Now we're not quite done with the giant of Geneva because we have here the latest Rolex Submariner. The successor to the Smurf, this one sometimes called the Blueberry, sometimes called the Smurf C. Uh, this is a bigger and bolder version of the watch that came out in 2008. That was the first of the ceramic bezel Submariners and it was the first modern six digit sub since the 80s. Of course, this watch larger than that one, whereas that one featured a blue lacquer dial and a bezel to match. This one has a black lacquer dial and a blue bezel in a 41 millimeter white gold case. Now, Rolex uses what's known as gray gold, which is an 18 karat white gold alloy that never needs to be rhodium plated. You can see it's a little bit warmer in appearance. Rhodium plated white gold looks silvery white. That is the color you get with platinum or with steel. You can see steel here is truly white, whereas the gray gold is a little bit warmer in appearance. The upside of gray gold is that when scratched, the same color gold is right underneath and it never needs to be replated. Now, of course, we have a modern Rolex Chronogy escapement in here, so you're getting a 70 hour power reserve here, 300 meters of water resistance. You can see the three dots with the large one in the center. That's how you know you are looking at a gold trip lock crown. The watch is highly anti-magnetic, shock resistant, and unlike the Daytona, which have limited tool-free adjustment built into their clasp. Here we have the Rolex Glide Lock system, which gives you 20 millimeters of tool-free adjustment in two millimeter increments. All the way out, now it's a dive suit extension. You can use the system for incremental sizing, however, it isn't just an all or nothing fold-out. And that's the great thing about Glide Lock. It really can be used to tailor fit. Throwing this watch on the wrist, you can see it's broad and it's flat. It's not quite as large as an Explorer 2. You might think that 41 and 42 Rolex would be quite similar. In fact, this watch is almost dimensionally identical to the 40 millimeter sub. And the largest dimension I can mention, which is the end link to end link distance, with my caliper, I found that is the largest difference between the new model and the old. The new model is 7 tenths of one millimeter broader across the wrist and the exact same thickness. The watch is identical on the wrist to the old model. It's just technically and aesthetically upgraded. Let's take a quick look at the Daytonas one more time because I didn't give you a proper wrist shot of those. And I know you're probably asking, how do they look? And now you ask and I answer. As you can see, even flatter than the sub. Again, all Daytonas are between 12.2 and 12.5 millimeters thick. It varies a little bit from case to case and gold to steel and platinum to steel, platinum to gold. Easy watch to wear, very handsome, very comfortable. Nicely counterweighted on these solid bracelets. Jumping back to the 
500 LN real quick. Again, this is sort of the King Kong Rolex of the moment. Not because it's the most expensive Rolex even used, but because in terms of the pre-owned markup compared to new, this watch takes the cake. It's the watch that, frankly, people seek most earnestly and most energetically. It's the most in-demand Rolex of our time, even if it's not the most expensive Rolex. Change of pace, a watch that perhaps is underrated. That's what I like to hear. A timepiece that represents an outstanding opportunity, as this is a 2021 version of the Bulgari Octo Finissimo Automatic Watch, which, upon its debut in 2017, won the GPHG Men's Watch Prize at the Oscars of Watchmaking. Now, for 2020, the watch gained a 100-meter water-resistant variant, and this is that, updated for 2021, with a lovely steel-on-steel -steel aesthetic. So it is all silver, all grayscale, vertical satin finish dial with applique polished indices. You can see the case, which Bulgari claims includes no fewer than 110 individual facets. It is now a little bit thicker, not much, whereas the original was 5.1 millimeters thick. This is about a millimeter larger. If you caliper match it, uh, you will find it's a bit larger, but it still sits lower than your wrist hair, which means it is still ultra thin. A lot of folks didn't like the ceramic and titanium versions that came first. They thought they were disconcertingly light. Well, in steel, the watch has a pleasing and gratifying weight to it. Still 40 millimeters in diameter. You can see it wears quite easily on my wrist. And the timepiece remains almost impossibly slim, thanks to a movement that is identical across Octo Finissimo automatic variants. It's the BVL 138. It has a platinum micro rotor, no holds barred. A lot of companies would use gold or even tungsten here. Bulgari using platinum because it has the most mass and it makes for the most efficient micro rotor winding. Having a micro rotor automatic means the rotor can sit in the same plane as the other bridges meaning this is effectively as thin as a manual wind would be. 60-hour power reserve, impressive for a movement that's just 2.23 millimeters thick. All of this done in-house, Bulgari over the years has purchased companies to make cases, clasps, bracelets, dials, and yes, movements, and it is the old Gerald Genta Daniel Rott manufacturer in Le Sentier that does the watchmaking here, which means it has a true high horology pedigree from a company that's done everything from tourbillon to grand sonnerie. The finishing is a combination of hand finish and mechanical, and I would say it's roughly up to the standard that you'll find on a Journe watch. The Journe movement would be made of gold, but the actual standard of the detailing here and the combination of the mechanical and the manual, it is very much equal between the Journes and the Bulgaries. The Bulgaries, of course, costing a whole lot less, speaking to the degree of value that you get with these watches. You have a screw-down crown here, 100 meters water-resistant, a very easy watch to live with. You can see they've gone to pains to make sure this is thin, as there's a recess inside the bracelet that allows the clasp to sit flush with the bracelet when it's closed inside the bracelet. Truly spectacular stuff. Bulgari, a brand on the rise. Turning back the clock a little bit to a very different type of integrated bracelet sports watch. In 1996, Vacheron decided to get back into the sports watch game, and it did so with the Overseas. Initially powered by a Vacheron-modified Girard Perigot movement, the first-generation Overseas automatic was a chronometer, and this is a COSC certified certified watch right here. 37 millimeters in diameter. It's a nice mid-size case. It's roughly equivalent to something like a Royal Oak 14790, though it wears a little bit larger. Now you can see on my wrist, it's anything but petite. Nicely sized and broad-shouldered thanks to the integrated bracelet. It's 37 in diameter, but it wears larger, and it's 8.7 millimeters thick, which means it is ultra-thin for a 150-meter water-resistant automatic watch. The timepiece is beautifully finished, and as you can see, this one has just been refinished, so I am going to leave it in its packaging. Everything is immaculate. There is not a scratch on its entirety. The bracelet is beautifully made, and as you can see, it is mirror-polished on the underside, and I do mean mirror-polished. And I optically smooth quality that's unique to these early overseas models. Removable links fixed by screws, no pin sleeves here, and you can see that the clasp is a fascinating design with twin trigger release quite robust. Uh, this is a later clasp design, and you can also see that this is the second evolution of the watch. There was an early 42040. This is the 42042, which has a slightly upgraded movement that makes it a little bit more impact resistant. Of course, you can see the image of the Italian Navy training vessel, Amerigo Vespucci, on the back. It's always been the symbol of the overseas series. Taking a quick look, you'll note this is the military dial variant of the watch, which is exceptional to behold and truly well lit. One of the later models with the Super Luminova dial, the earliest ones featured tritium. This one still functions as a sports watch. 
water resistant, full bracelet, automatic, and loomed. Now, shifting gears, we cross the border to Saxony and East Germany, and a model launched at SIHH in 2010. This is the Saxonia annual calendar, 38.5 millimeters. You can see the watch is beautifully made, an exquisite platinum 950. It features something you won't find anywhere else from any other brand, a rotor that is internally 21 karat hallmarked gold, and then externally solid platinum. The two pieces held together by fired blued screws and no fewer than four separate finishes on this rotor and mass. You can see the bridges and the plates. It is another micro rotor. This is called a three quarter rotor. It has the same quality as the micro rotor in that it shrinks the profile of the case, keeping the rotor in the same plane as the other bridges. And you'll appreciate that we have black polish galore as some of the screws feature black polish, the center of the rotor, the swan's neck regulator, and the cap to the escape wheel mirror finished with a diamond paste. The same treatment has been rendered on the barrel, which sits just below the German silver bridges. German silver is a nickel copper zinc alloy with the copper giving it that golden hue. You'll appreciate that the balance cock features freehand engraving, and then there is mirrored true rounded hand finished unglage on the edge of every bridge with engine turning in two sizes three sizes even on the base plate we also have fired kiln blued screws these are not chemically dyed and that lovely black polished swan's neck fine adjustment mechanism it is a micro rotor auto with a zero reset stop second system so you can see how it zeroes out the seconds hand and stops the balance we have an annual calendar that needs to be adjusted only once a year during the jump from february to march thus an annual calendar. White gold hands, white gold indices. The dial is galvanized gray, but the dial itself is hallmarked 925 sterling silver. So it's platinum externally, and then it's sterling silver with white gold hands and indices internally. Throw it on the wrist. It's about 10.7 millimeters thick, so quite slim, and then 38.5 millimeters in diameter, a lovely timepiece evocative of Longa in so many regards. The front, the back, the balance, the Teutonic sobriety. It's an upright, sober watch that you could wear with formal attire, and yet it has a raffish flair to it. Maybe it's the proportions, I'm not sure, but there is something vaguely sporty about this watch. It could be its cool sports watch-like grayscale aesthetic, but this is a timepiece that really pushes the limits of a dress watch right up to the edge of the pool. Don't go swimming with it, but this can easily be your casual companion. That said, my favorite longa on today's show is the late great 39 millimeter Datograph flyback launched in 1999, back when Longa still exhibited at Basel World. Uh, this was the watch that forced the Swiss, especially Patek Philippe, to rethink what they were doing. Uh, the Datograph is a monster. Although 39 millimeters, it's the detail that gets you. The dial is also sterling silver, but you can see there's a stepped tachymeter scale outboard. It is actually loomed, which makes it surprisingly practical. The silver base is visible on the concentric engraved counters. And then we have its center hands that are loomed in a lovely alpha style, a combination of stick indices and Roman numerals. It is the Dautograph flyback, so you can reset and restart with a single push of the trigger down at four o'clock. The pusher feel here, world class, one of the best feeling and sounding column wheel actions you'll encounter. The watch does feature hacking or stop seconds. And then there is a pusher system. Oops. Pusher system for cycling the date, which actually feels just as good as cycling the chronograph. Flip it over, caliber L9511. Big, slow, pocket watch style, 18,000 vibration per hour beat rate, over coil hairspring, adjusted in five positions, chronometer style. We have a column wheel here, black polished in its entirety, with a lateral clutch. The clutch component, the levers, horns, the column wheel, all of this in stainless steel. So you can see the edge of the steel is beveled and the top of the steel is satinated. The top of the bridges in German silver feature glasuta stripes. There's that engraving again, engine turning on the base plate, plenty of black polish. You can see everything turning black as I angle the watch is what's known as poly noir. It is the black polish that reflects light only in one direction. We've got those fired blued screws again. And then just look at the chronograph clutch, those sharp outward angles and sharp inward angles. The most difficult finishing assignment in high horology, the sharp inward cleft where two bevels meet, and then the sharp outward point where two bevels converge. You can also see that it is an in 
instantaneous jumping minute. You will see the little minute reader jumping once a minute. Overcoil hairspring made by hand. Absolutely nothing not to love here. The standard of finish took Patek Philippe by storm, and they realized they needed to raise their game and start preparing for their successor to the current 5070 at the time. They launched the 5070 one year before this, and while I still love that watch, this was a sea change in the industry that told them they need their own movement and they need better finishing standards. That is what this watch achieved. Told Patek it had to be able to make its own chronograph and it had to finish that chronograph to a higher standard. That's why Philippe Dufour owns this watch in its black dial rose gold variant. They call it the Duforograph. It's one of the few watches from another brand that he has bought for himself. This one would be my choice. The combination of ultra white and black dial has unlimited power. A watch that wears compact, but wears with gravitas. The best way to describe it, and this one features a highly desirable Longa optional upgrade in a matching Platinum 950 folding clasp. Most of these have pin buckles. Jumping into the world of Patek, here is a watch that was built briefly and is rarely seen. The ultimate summertime companion, it is the Patek Philippe 5711J, which by my estimate was made from about 2007 to 2009 and rarely delivered. This one on a white rubber strap, 120 meters water resistant, is ready to go the distance at your next pool party or beach engagement. And if you fall off your yacht, again, 120 meters water resistant, you're good to go. It has a warmer, more playful look than a standard steel Nautilus, or even the somewhat, uh, I would say, formal rose gold looks with their gray dials. This one, white and yellow, is just a full-blown, laugh-out-loud, smile, goofy grin type of watch. But Tech Fleet proving it can channel a little bit of the Elan and offbeat flair of Audemars Piguet and Hublot. Those two might have staked a claim to the wacky end of the sports watch spectrum, but Patek Philippe showing with this white and yellow gold opus, it has a good sense of fun in its own right and only 8.7 millimeters thick. This is a lovely, fun, and endearing watch. Let's take a quick look. In the dark, a true sports watch, automatic winding, totally water resistant, rubber strap, and an absolute pleasure to wear. And again, being a 5711, it is quite slender and it's a absolutely suitable for him or for her. With the strap, you have the ability to pull the strap tightly down around a smaller wrist. So it actually wears better on a small wrist than a standard 5711 on a bracelet. Now let's say your sports watch full bracelet budget isn't quite Patek, Vacheron, or even Bulgari level. Not a problem. Bell & Ross has you covered. Launched in 2019 in 40 millimeters in stainless steel, this is the Bell & Ross BR05. What I like about it is that it has a first class clasp bracelet and case made by GNF Chatelain, which is a super high-end case bracelet and clasp maker owned by Chanel, Bell & Ross owned by Chanel. Chanel also has stakes in Romain Gautier and F. P. Journe, so Chanel becoming an interesting luxury group in the watch space. But this watch right here probably represents its best value through all model lines and all brands in the sports watch segment. 100 meters water resistant, automatic, fully loomed, and on a full bracelet, perfectly suitable for hot climates where straps tend to suffer. This is a great match, especially if you want to jump into the pool unimpeded by fear of soaking or drowning your watch. Simple case back, simple movement, 42 hour powers of automatic hack second quick set date. Bell & Ross with a color matching date disc on the blue metallic dial and lovely applique indices and tri-Arabic numerals. The finishing on the case, though executed principally mechanically, is handsome, neat, and thoughtfully designed, giving the impression of a much more expensive watch. And remember, whereas Patek Philippe now includes removable links in its bracelets using pins and sleeves, here, the Chatelain bracelet gives you removable links fixed by screws so you can size it easily at home and note the use of these partial links to give you a little bit more incremental adjustment if you're somewhere in between the full lengths, you've got these partials on both sides. An easy watch to wear, super flat flush. It's nice and low on the wrist, so you can absolutely wear it with tight sleeves or a dress cuff if you want. Sure, it's a fun watch. It could be considered a party watch, but it's not just a party watch. This could be worn with formal or office attire. Sticking with sports watches, 
Here are two exceptional examples. From high horology, we have Blancpain and the Bathyscaphe, uh, designed to be a little bit more of a vintage-inspired 50 Fathoms model. It launched at Ball's World 2013, 43 millimeters. It features elements of older 50 Fathoms models in contrast to the modern reference 5015, which is the core collection 45 millimeter 50 Fathoms. This one has a no crown guard profile, a 1950s style big crown, a squared off set of lugs that are minimally beveled with a sheer case band. All of this a little bit more vintage inspired than the 5015, which is really a modern watch that traces its ancestry back without aping the exact style of those ancestors. This is more of a retro watch. Mechanically identical, they're both 300 meters water resistant. They're both powered by caliber 1315 with the five-day power reserve. Throw it on the wrist. Again, my wrist 16 centimeters in circumference. It's a good match. It's not terribly broad, and it's about 13 and a half millimeters thick, which means it's about 1.5 millimeters thinner than the 5015. This one in steel, you can see that it is well loomed. Let's do a loom shot here. Plenty of luminescence, and then a little exaggerated syringe style tips to the otherwise baton style hands nice crisp and precise bezel and it has a ceramic insert turn it all over and you can see caliber 1315 three mainspring barrels it is a five-day power reserve the beveling here is out of this world and a mile wide you can see it here without magnification the screw heads are all black polished with chamfered slots and chamfered circumference you can see we have four different finishings on the rotor. There's mirrored englage on the edge, satin around the periphery, media blasting within, and then a grooved graining that runs off the edge of the mass. You'll appreciate that there's also a lovely spiral dressage or a little wrought engraving that radiates out from the center of the movement across the bridges rather than a hackneyed coat de Genève that wouldn't look right on a movement in a sporty watch. This looks perfect and understated. Anti-magnetic silicon hairspring, stop seconds, quick set date, recessed bolt, free sprung balance for shock resistance and precise setting. It is a wonderful watch with a sailcloth strap that has rubber on the underside to cushion your wrist and isolate it from the coarse textile, but these straps have been known to last a decade. The sailcloth with the rubber underneath, extraordinarily reliable and durable. Now, if you don't quite have requirement for a diver, well, you might want to consider the Pioneer Center Second in Swiss Mad Red from H. Moser & C. Now, this is a watch that is 42.8 millimeters in diameter, 120 meters water resistant, automatic, fully loomed, and it comes from a brand that only makes 1,500 watches a year, so you're talking about a real high horology manufacturer out of Schaffhausen, Switzerland. They are the other manufacturer alongside IWC in Schaffhausen. With 1,500 watches made per year, of which only a fraction are steel sports watches, you're guaranteed exclusivity, and if you want to know your watch brand CEO on a first-name basis, Edward Milan of Moser is all over social media, posting on the various groups and responding to posts about Moser and questions about Moser, so it truly is an interactive brand that's possible to know, whereas if you're talking about Rolex, the Swatch brands, one of the Richemont brands, you'll really never know the people who are at the heart of the creation of your watches, whereas with Edward, he's very accessible, and Moser is a very warm, welcoming company with a wonderful online community. Community. Now you can see on the case back, the movement is a manufacturer automatic winding caliber. They call it HMC 200. It does have stop seconds, three day automatic. The power reserve is 72 hours, wound bi-directionally by a magic lever system. A full balance bridge with a free sprung index makes this a shock tolerant movement. And Moser impressively makes all the tough parts of the movement, not just bridges, blades, and wheels, but also hair springs, escapements, and balances. This watch has a lovely case profile that's first machined and then hand finished to create this break between satin and polish and then these deep coined recesses. And there's a wonderfully fluid and supple Moser factory strap on here. You can see it's Moser branded on the bottom. Vulcan organized rubber with a curved profile so it doesn't get hung up on the edge of the case and then perforations to vent the wrist. It's equipped with a simple no-nonsense matching steel pin buckle that has little striations like the coining on the side of the case. Design parallelism that I love. The dial is a Moser Fumé which means bright at the center, dark at the edge. It's a signature of their brand along with minimal printing on the dial. You can see H Moser and C. That's it. Rolex. Um, a bit much. But at least the Submariner is more minimal. Uh, okay, never mind. Like I said, Moser is all about minimalism. And this watch is quintessential Moser with its Fumé fade and its minimally printed dial. Now, if you have a more modest budget, 
but you still want a high-grade luxury watch in the sports segment. Let's fly to Frankfurt, cross the border once more into Germany, and here we have this bilingual Zinn Pilot's Watch 104. It is the 104-012, a timepiece that is lovely with its ECM 1.1 and 1 style lugs, so the 1.1 and the 1 before it sort of set the template for Zinn's best-known case design. Here's my 1.1, inspired by the original ECM 1, and you can see those sharply faceted, striking angular lugs that break out from the case band, and that is Zinn's most iconic design. They don't have a whole lot of core designs. A lot of what they do over the years has been borrowed from other brands such as the 903s, the Navitimers, or is relatively generic to the sports watch classes. But when you see this case, you know you're looking at a Zin. This is one of their best and most enduring designs. The 104 is a simplified pilot's watch with a bi-directional rotating bezel, plenty of looms, syringe style hands for the hours and minutes, a lovely gloss lacquered white dial base. It is made in Germany in Frankfurt, which is the financial capital of continental Europe. And then we have a bilingual calendar. We have a double quick set system for the date and then also for the day. And you can see whether in its native tongue or en anglais, this watch is multi-talented. It's also remarkably water resistant for a pilot's watch, which tend to be between 30 and 60 meters. This watch remarkably is 20 atmospheres. That's 200 meters. It uses a top grade ETA 2824 and then the 2824 is a 38-hour power reserve with a quick set, double, and hacking seconds. The timepiece, of course, is wonderfully equipped with a strap that is almost more luxurious than you'd expect. This took me aback with my own Zen. Their straps are unexpectedly buttery, wonderfully supple and comfortable. In spite of being very robust and thick cut, they feel broken in, fluid on the wrist, and the case construction is unimpeachable. Zen making its own cases through its subsidiary SUG. They also make these captive bezels where screws fix the bezel to the case, so you can't accidentally snap the bezel off. It has to be disassembled. It can't be accidentally flipped off by an errant impact, and that's another feature you'll see on my 1.1. This watch a whole lot more compact than the 1.1, easier to wear on the wrist. Mine's a 43, this being a 41. I could actually recommend it for wrists as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference, and it looks real good. A timepiece that's formal enough to be your dress watch and thin enough to fit underneath a tight sleeve. As you can see, there is no shortage of luminescence on this dial, and the bezel pearl is enormous. It's handy dandy and great for timing, anything you might need to time. I actually find rotating bezels to be handier than chronographs. Just keep in mind, whereas a chronograph counts up, this bezel counts down like a mission timer. All right, Jager Le Coult, and we're going back to 2007, and what might have been the watch of the 2000s for total innovation, the Duomet Econograph is a timepiece that pushed the limits of what was technically possible, even in the era of computer-assisted design. Taking an idea from the 1880s in a Victorin Piguet à Bauch, twin drive trains, two mainsprings, extra power, one barrel, power complications, one barrel to keep the balance at a constant amplitude. That's the idea. Two watches in one case, that's why it's called the dual wing movement. The lever alternately activates and deactivates these two, so it's a stop, start, stop, start, stop, start, alternating between the two, so that one barrel, and each barrel has its own power reserve indicator, one barrel will run the time, one barrel will run the chronograph, achieving a unique distinction. This is one of the few chronographs, possibly the only chronograph, that loses neither power reserve nor balance amplitude when you activate the chronograph. The FP Journ Santograph does not lose balance amplitude, but it draws more heavily on the one mainspring barrel, so power reserve of the Journ goes from 80 to 24 hours with the chronograph running. Here, it's 50 with the chronograph, it's 50 without. Now, the Platinum watch was the scarcest of the original versions of the Duomenta chronograph, and the watch was a boutique edition when equipped with this white dial. The standard dial is gray-gray, this one is white with a subtle sandpaper grain. The chronograph, of course, a piece that includes one side that gives you chronograph functions and one side that gives you time-telling functions. You can see the blued hands are for the chronograph, the polished white gold hands are for the time. Now, the register for the minutes is... Uh, Two part. One, you have a single digit scrolling minutes counter at the bottom of the style. Then you have a hand that represents basically tens of minutes. And then there's the hour hand, which is coaxial with the tens of minutes. So you know, for example, you're going to be looking at one 
140, and then it's just past 141 right here. And that is the time elapsed. That's the time the chronograph's been running. Coaxial center seconds for time and for chronograph, and a one-sixth of a second foudrillant as a register of fractional seconds. Resetting this mono pusher chronograph is a wonderful piece of horological theater. You wind the watch using one crown. The watch winds in two different directions because there are ratchets, pocket watch style, on the barrels. One ratchets at his free wheels while the other winds. The movement is built like a longa, and I'm not just saying that. You can easily see that the depth and the use of that golden German silver material is the same here. It's not called German silver in the Valais de Jeu, where Gégère Lecoult builds its watches. It's known as Maichot. And it's still the same thing, nickel, copper, and zinc. Beautiful beveling, mile-wide on glage. You can see there's a Côte de Soleil or sunburst waves that radiate out from the balance. Free-sprung 21.6 beat rate, black-polished mono-pusher column wheel. We have both black-polished screws here, and you can see just on the barrels, both black-polished screws and fired oxidized blue screws. There's a lovely engine turning on the base plate. Everything about this watch represents the best that Gégère Lecoult can achieve. And these are timed to run no worse then minus one second plus six seconds from the factory. 42 millimeters in platinum, it's an imposing thing and quite solid. This strap, which you can see right here, is a genuine Gégère Lecoult factory strap, so while it is a little bit more alive and colorful than a standard JLC strap, nevertheless, it is the real deal made by Camille Fournay, the OEM supplier to Gégère Lecoult. I owned the white gold version of this watch for four years after lusting after it for four, and that was eight years well spent. I adored this watch. You can also see that the case is more sophisticated than your standard JLC as the lugs are broken out separately and then they're welded on with double finishing achieved by polishing the lugs and then satin finishing the mid-case. You can even see the crown is special and non-generic on this watch, the best that JLC has to offer. The thing about Franck Muller is that most Franck Muller watches are quotidian. They are simple, three hands, a date, or three hands, no date, and yet they always remind us on the back, master of complications. Well, this one doesn't need to boast. It is the master imperial. It is the Centre Curvex Master Imperial Tourbillon, one of the truly complicated Franck Muller watches. You could see it is extraordinary in every regard. Platinum mass platinum class, freehand engraved, hand-finished movement. You can see the beveling is a mile wide, but this watch is about more than just anglage. Every single bridge has been freehand engraved with a floral pattern. We have here fired blued screws, the caliber FM2001. This model launched in 2001, guilloche dial, flying tourbillon with no upper bridge, and you can see that the tourbillon carriage itself has been freehand engraved. Now the watch, is dramatically loomed. Uncommon for a dress watch, even less common for a tourbillon. The watch uses a sort of Art Nouveau font for the numerals. This is an Art Deco. Art Deco is like the numeral font on a standard reverse, so it's a little bit more upright, a little bit more clinical. This is extravagant. It's the spirit of the 1920s. It's the flapper era. It's jazz. This watch in a lovely case that's 48.7 millimeters lug to lug. It's about 35.5 millimeters wide and 11.8 millimeters thick. It does have a curved case back, which is not cheap or easy to achieve. You can see the individual numbering has been freehand engraved on that case back. The movement has a 48 hour manual wind power reserve. It beats away at 18K. It has a lovely, stately, unobstructed flying tourbillon with no upper bridge. Throw it on the wrist a truly special watch that wears well on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. Though substantial, it wears easily. I would say it's comparable to a 42 millimeter round watch if you want a comparison. It also has a wonderfully vocal escapement. I don't think you can hear it on the video, but you will hear it if you own the watch. Recommend it. Okay, Grubel 4C, uncompromising. When you buy a Grubel 4C, I can't tell you for a fact that every Grubel is finished better than every Dufour or every Fernand Berthoud or every Lang und Heine or for that matter, every Voudelainen or Ferrier. But what I can tell you is that Grubel is part of a small circle of watch brands for which the finish is regarded as co-equally the best in the industry. Now, there are others, to be sure, but the upper echelon always includes Grubel, no matter who is doing the ranking. This watch, launched in 2018, is the white gold Differential d'Egalité. Individual numbering, 
multiply across the case and take note the numbering is freehand engraved along with the addition limite notation the engraving is done manually and freehand not with a drill the case back features the textual philosophy of robert grubel and stephen forsey how they make their watches in le chaux de fonds and why they make them that way and of course they make about 100 to 120 watches a year and that's about how many employees they have the level of finishing and technical sophistication meaning grubel forsey has one of the lowest ratios of watches made to employees. Now, you can also see that the case back features a dramatic black polished and mirror beveled a set of mechanisms that underpin an elaborate zero reset seconds stop seconds function. Notice the balance stops. You have scrolling seconds and then you have a deadbeat seconds system, power reserve of 60 hours, twin superimposed mainspring barrels. The dial has a lovely wire brush frosted bridge underneath the power reserve. The power reserve indicator itself is actually made of white gold and then inked so you can read the time. The hands at center are black polished and you can see that the Timepiece features a free sprung balance adjusted in six positions with a handmade overcoil hairspring. Now note this balance structure on which it's mounted. That is entirely black polished all the way around, including the pillars. The screws are the proverbial 100 Swiss franc screws that can take individually hours to make. The wheels feature beveled inner circumference and spokes, something that is not universal even at the Geneva Hallmark level. It's easily overlooked and excluded. You can get the Poncelin de Genève without internally finishing your wheels, but but you will not find a Grubel 4 seat lacking that refinement. Taking a quick look, you can see there's actually a spring-based differential system that achieves constant force to the escapement for the full 60-hour power reserve, and then a stop works will stop the watch from keeping time if it cannot keep time accurately. So the differential is a constant force device that lacks the friction and complexity of a fusée and the periodic fluctuations in torque created by remontoire systems, such as those you'll find on the Alangu Unzona Terra Luna or the FP Journe Tourbillon Souverain. So here we have a spherical differential, a constant force device that ensures constant amplitude for 60 hours, allowing this watch to be adjusted very, very precisely. You can also see that the beveling, and you can see it just underneath the hands, is a mile wide and as bright as the sun. And then we have that lovely frosting. The bridges here are in my short, but then they are rhodium plated to give them more of a silvery shine. You can see underneath the constant seconds, there is a full black polish structure adjacent to the differential everything about this watch representing the best there is right down to the depth and sculpting of the hand finished case which is really something else the watch is 44 millimeters in diameter but it's big so you can look into it and enjoy the movement and as you can see it's got a little bit of loom but we're not done no this is not over until Vacheron says it's over. And this watch, launched in 2019, represents something approaching the ultimate Vacheron Constantin overseas. Only 10.7 millimeters thick with an 80 hour power reserve wound by a peripheral rotor mass. This is the overseas tourbillon. The overseas tourbillon with a screw down crown and 50 meters water resistant in stainless steel, it is surface swimmable per Vacheron. It features a quick release bracelet system. The watch comes with a rubber strap in blue and a leather strap in blue. Note that not only do we have a quick release system, but every single link in the bracelet, and I mean every single link on each side, is removable for precise sizing. Not only that though, but we have 1.5 millimeter quick adjust pull out push in tab slots on both sides of the clasp that allow you to micro size. You'll also note that the bracelet is beautifully hand finished. Look at these polished recesses, sharply finished internally. This is inside the bracelet. Every single individual link is finished all the way around, including the parts you can't easily see when it's on the wrist. There's a perfectly aligned transitional bevel down the sides of these links. And what I love about this watch is that it uses a movement that was introduced in 2018 on a dress watch, and that is the peripheral rotor caliber 2160. So it's an 80 hour power reserve, and the rotor moves around the outside of the movement. This is rare and difficult to achieve. There are not a lot of peripheral rotors. You 
you could see that it includes not a 21, not an 18 karat mass, but a 22 karat mass hand finished with four different finishings on the rotor itself. As with a micro rotor, it allows you to put all of the mechanism inside the plane of the bridges. So you can have an automatic watch that's as thin as a manual wand watch, and it opens up the display case back. Whereas a center rotor, even a good one, is going to block part of your view. Here, the rotor blocks none of the view, and the movement bears the Poisson de Genève, the Geneva hallmark. It's on the case. It's also on the movement, as since mid-2012, it has been a full watch standard. You can see the anglage on the edge of the bridges, the high quality of the screws, the satination of the wheels, the perfectly aligned Cote de Genève rundown striped across the bridges using an abrasive wheel in the traditional fashion, and the watch with a lovely translucent blue dial. It's a translucent blue lacquer on a black polished metallic base. You can see the tourbillon itself in the shape of the Vacheron Maltese Cross logo, and you can see that it acts as a seconds indication with one side of the tourbillon featuring a blued screw, the other three are polished, free sprung, it beats away at 21,600 vibrations per hour, and of course it features an overcoil hairspring as good as it gets. Reach out to Team also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.